no G to G. Kenya government did not sign any contract with Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates. Only the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum signed a deal with the state-owned petroleum companies in the Middle East. Why Ruto chose to characterize the deal as a G2G is the first red flag that points to mischief in this deal. I now know that the characterization of this deal as a G2G was meant to shield the three Kenyan companies from paying a 30% corporate tax. I will return to this matter later. Two, the shilling has continued to fall against the dollar. The cost of oil has not come down since the deal was signed. Four, the scarcity of the dollar has continued. Five, the landlocked countries that depend on us for oil are abandoning our pipeline because it has become too expensive. In other words, the deal has not addressed any of the problems Ruto said it would. When Ruto initiated this deal, the US dollar to the Kenya shilling exchange, exchange rate was 132. Today, six months later, it is Kenya shillings 159 to the dollar. The cost of fuel shot up significantly after the deal. Why have things moved from bad to worse since the deal was signed? Well, the deal was a scam for which we now demand full disclosure and full accountability. It is corrupt and rotten to the core. It is state capture by Mr. Ruto and company and a conspiracy against the country. Ruto's collapsing the country while feeding Kenyans on lullabies. Other than keeping the cost of oil permanently high in Kenya, the deal is costing the country dearly in terms of trade in petroleum with the landlocked neighbors. It is shrouded in deep secrecy. To date, only two documents have been made public. That is, the Master Framework Agreement with Petroleum Trading Entities and the Open Tender System Modified Agreement with Marketers. The Supplier Purchase Agreement between the Middle East oil farms and the hand-picked distributors in Kenya has never been seen. We challenge Mr. Ruto to publish this document. Nobody knows how Gulf Energy, Galana Oil Kenya Limited, and Oryx Energies Kenya Limited got nominated to handle local logistics. But the hand-picked distributors are selling oil to us at almost twice the price from bulk suppliers. These companies are also manipulating deliveries dates, ranges so that they can minimize on prices. We know that in August this year, four months after the deal, the government allowed Oryx Energies to sell oil at prices that had been inflated by 17%. In the Ruto deal, Oryx is a supplier of diesel to other oil marketing companies in the country. The excuse was to delay in discharging fuel at the jetty. This shady business model is being deployed by all the companies that were retained in the Ruto deal. They buy at low prices, delay discharging, then ask to be allowed to offload at higher prices and the cost is passed on to the consumers. In the case of Oryx, 
it had bought the diesel at an average plus price of $97.88. dollars that is uh, 14,182 shillings per barrel in July, but was allowed to sell the same to oil marketing companies at 114.5 US dollars, that is 16,585 shillings per barrel. Some of the companies charging the higher prices deliver more cargo than they were contracted to deliver, forcing Kenyans to buy more of the oil whose prices are inflated, hence the permanent high prices of petroleum products. The ministry is, ch is ch changing billing month to allow the oil firms quote higher prices. For instance, cargo that was bought in July when the price was low is allowed to cut higher August prices and pass the burden to the consumer. The deal that Ruto hailed as phenomenal has resulted in high landed costs as a result of structuring of the contract. The faults include the double counting of some, some cost elements and fixed freighted premium which sometimes are higher but up to $50 per metric ton. The cost is passed on to the consumers. It also lacks flexibility, which further exacerbates the pricing model. Uganda has announced that it will no longer purchase petroleum products from Kenya because middlemen have inflated prices by up to 59%, imposing too high a cost on consumers. The exact same scenario is prevailing here. The middlemen President Museveni is talking about are the Kenya government officials. I repeat, the middlemen President Museveni is talking about are the Kenya government officials. The deal has interrupted supply. Gulf Energy which manages up to 50% of government importation, has been experiencing serious challenges securing letters of credit. This is because the single bank that was picked to provide the letter of, letter of credit is struggling with big bad loans. Consequently, there's delay for clearance of importers to upload oil. Ships are queuing at sea for up to 18 days awaiting a confirmation of a letter of credit in order to discharge while the Kenya pipeline company goes without operations for days because there is nothing to process. Then the companies incur demurrage, which is transferred to the consumer. Under the, under the open tender system, that the old system. Demolage costs are 45,000 US dollars per day for the biggest tanker docking at the port of Mombasa and 31,000 dollars per day for the second biggest vessel. But under the Ruto deal, demolage has risen up to 70,000 dollars per day. This cost is passed on to the consumers at the pump. You will have noticed that Tanzania recently reduced the cost of petroleum products from 1st of November, while Kenyans remain the same or just marginally changed. Tanzania said it was reducing prices because of decrease in the world oil prices by an average of 5.68%, while premiums for importation of petroleum products had decreased by an average of 13% for super petrol, also known as premium motor gasoline or premium motor spirit, and 25% for automotive gas oil or diesel. We will not hear that story here because of the corrupt dealings 
written into the Ruto deal. As ships accumulate extra charges on the high seas, the money sits in an escrow account in a local bank where it earns interest. It remains unclear who the beneficiaries of the crude interest is. This deal has led to high cost of oil products sourced through the Northern Corridor Transit Route, the Kenya route. The freight and premium rates for the May 2023 cargoes were higher in the Northern Corridor by 61% compared to the Central Corridor. Northern Corridor is the run, running Mombasa, Nairobi, Malaba, Kampala, and to DRC. The Central Corridor, the one that comes from Dar es Salaam all the way to Rwanda, Uganda, and DRC. That rise in freight and premium is reflected at the pump. That is why, that is, that is what has pushed Uganda and other forward markets like South Sudan, Eastern DRC, Rwanda, and Burundi to consider importing goods through the Central Corridor or Tanzania route. Uganda is shifting to the Central Corridor, meaning that they are going to be using the port of Dar es Salaam or Tanga rather than Mombasa. The volume it ferries via Kenya pipeline has dropped by 52% from 70%. So other than making petroleum products ever more costly, the deal is going to kill Kenya, the Kenya pipeline company as soon as this year. You need to know that it is the Ugandan market that arms the Kenya pipeline company for an exchange. The transit volumes account for 51% of Kenya pipeline company's revenue, which stands at an average of 2.6 billion shillings per month. When the company loses in the volume transported, it results in higher tariffs, which is transferred to the local consumer in terms of higher cost of petroleum products. A 10% reduction in the transit volumes result in a 5% increase in tariffs, which is reflected in the pumps in terms of cost of fuel. The change of route by landlocked trading partners will force a number of Kenyan oil marketing companies and logistic firms to close shop. Of course, this leads to job losses, loss of foreign exchange, loss of revenue for the country, as a result of KPC losing transit share. Ideally, Kenya should have provided a pipeline and storage capacity and location for Uganda market. Kenya should also have allowed the direct participation of the Uganda oil marketers in sourcing petroleum products through the Northern Corridor route. But because corruption was written into the deal, the Ruto administration could not allow neighbors in fear of exposure. Consequently, the KPC is set to lose substantial business to Tanzania. To Tanzania, sorry. Uganda's shift to the Central Corridor will most certainly influence Rwanda, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, and South Sudan. As KPC loses business, it will charge more for its product to stay afloat, hence the ever-rising cost of petroleum products. The deal only ended up creating irregular supplies and higher prices. Open tender system allowed for competitive sourcing of fuel. Monopolistic tendencies for purposes of maximizing profit goes against the demand for efficiency and the need for lower prices. It is going to drive a number of oil marketing firms out of business, leading to job losses and loss of revenue for the government. The deal that Ruto signed with the oil companies has excessively high freights and premiums 
compared to those witnessed in the open tender systems. They are as high as an additional $50 per metric ton. In the end, Kenya is losing billions of shillings in taxes because the three companies picked to spearhead this deal do not pay the 30% corporate tax. Shielding companies, uh, shielding the three companies from this tax is the reason Ruto told Kenyans that it was a G to G deal. Your guess is as good as mine on who is pocketing the unpaid corporate tax. But the burden of the unpaid corporate tax is passed to Kenyans at the pump. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I was stunned. One, Ruto must immediately cancel the contract and revert to the open tender system, which ensured guaranteed supply of petroleum products. It has signed responsibility to various players as opposed to the so-called G2G that is making Kenyans depend on inefficient and corrupt players. The open tender system was efficient, accountable, and competitive, and offered prices commensurate with international pricing model. Two, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission needs to move in, not to sanitize, but to get to the bottom of how and why we got into this deal and who is benefiting from it. Three, the men and women who came up with this self-serving deal must be surcharged and sacked. Four, the government must restore taxes to 8% from the 16% that came with the Finance Act. Five, the government must make public the so-called MOU between Kenya and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Six, the Ministry of Energy and, and Petroleum must make public the deal is signed with oil companies. Seven, the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum must make public the supplier purchase agreement it signed with the oil companies. Eight, the ESCC and the Director of Criminal Investigations must investigate the tax compliance status and pricing model of the three oil companies. Nine, we need a comprehensive brief on what the move by Uganda to pursue much of its petroleum needs through the Tanzanian uh, Central Corridor means to our country, especially to the future of the Kenya Pipeline Company. End of statement. Thank you. labda kwa Kiswahili mheshimiwa Raila uh, katika siku za majuzi tumeona kama kuna mfanyabiashara tata ambaye <coughs> anadai kwamba mafuta yake ambaye alileta ilinyakuliwa na serikali labda kwa mtazamo wako unaweza semaje kuhusiana na hayo kisha cha pili where does this revelation of yours now uh, put uh, the ongoing national dialogue talks thank you yeah yale ambayo yanafanyika hiyo mfanyi biashara yenyewe inadhihirisha ukweli uh, yale ni wale watu ambaye wametofautiana uh, pamoja sasa mwingine anasema huyu hii shena ni yangu mwingine anasema hii shena ni yangu uh, wale pamoja hata wewe mwenyewe unaweza kushangaa yale ambayo yanafanyika mbona kama kuna shida mtu anashikwa usiku anafungwa macho kwa sababu gani kama jamaa hajaiba 
ayafanya chochote kama hata yeye ni muizi mbona ashuke mchana na apeleke mahakamani ni wale ni wao wao uwezi wawili wanashikana wana peke yao upande mwingine uh, sisi tuko na na washirika wetu ambao sisi tulituma kwa yale mazungumzo mmoja wao ndugu Eugene wa Mara yuko hapa sisi tuliwambia katika yale majadiliano kuna maneno ambayo sisi hatuwezi kuacha nje tuliweka masharti atuko na maneno ambayo mpaka tupate suluhu haswa yale ambayo yanahusu wa, 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 wananchi wenyewe kwa mfano moja yao ni gharama ya maisha tumesema gharama ya maisha mpaka irudi chini hiyo ni moja ya masharti ya mazungumzo yetu ingine ni kuundwa kwa tume ya uchaguzi tatu ni ukaguzi ya matokeo ya uchaguzi uliopita nne ni mambo ya kutuingilia kwa vyama vingine vya kisiasa Uh, kuheshima kwa vyama vya, vya kisiasa yale ya mabasati lakini muhimu zaidi ni gharama ya maisha lazima irudi chini na wao wamesema vile inawezekana tumesema kwa mfano ili ushuru waliweka kwa mafuta itolewe kutoka 10.16 irudishe pale ile kwako 8.8 hiyo ni moja yao um, na kadhalika na kadhalika sasa so, tumesema kama hawezi kukubali basi haviendi tumesema kama hawezi kukubali yale hiyo tunasema hakuna mazungumzo hakuna maafikiano Over the weekend, you alluded that the inflation of prices on petroleum on, on on fuel was about 30 shillings. Maybe expound on that and how these you call cartels are fleecing Kenyans' pockets at the pump, and how much by how much? No, uh, I mentioned uh, the other time, and you're going to find it in the statement that I've just read there. How prices are being inflated and um, uh, then passed on to the consumer. I mentioned, for example, you'll find that um, you're being charged 217 shillings, but the actual price would be 800, uh, 187 shillings. Now, where we are not sure is how that 30 shillings is being distributed, who is the beneficiary. But I've also explained to you how the whole of this process uh, was, 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 was conceived, how it was then uh, uh, executed, and how it is actually hurting the, the consumer down here. Um, you'll find, for example, that ships are taking a very long. They're waiting when letters of credit have not been confirmed, incurring demerit charges. The demerit charges themselves have also been increased. It used to be $45, $1,000 per day. It is now $70,000 under this deal. And all that is being passed on to the consumer. So what is happening here is a complete rip-off. People are paying for air, and these people are very happy with this. Langu niombi tu kama unaweza fafanua kwa lugha ya Kiswahili ujumbe wako kuhusiana na swala nzima la mafuta. Tumesema kwanza tuliambiwa ati hii uh, mpango ni uh, serikali na kwa serikali. Yaani ndio kwa kizungumbo inaitwa G2G government to government. Lakini Tibitisho hiku hapa ya kwamba siyo si mpango ya serikali kwa serikali. Serikali ya Kenya ajaweka mkataba na serikali ya Saudi Arabia au ya, ya Emirates. Hii ni kati ya wizara ya kawi 
yani ya wa Kenya na makampuni moja ya Emirates na nyingine ya kule Saudia mwana itwa Aramco Allah sasa wao hapa hapa makampuni mengine matatu wamepewa kandarasi hakuna mtu anajua vile hizo kandarasi lilipewa manake zamani kulikuwa na kiti mbaya inaitwa open tender system mimi kama waziri wa nilikuwa waziri wa kawi wakati mwingine na chini yangu tulikuwa tunafanya makampuni yote ya, ya kuuza mafuta walikuwa wanakubaliwa kushiriki kwenye tenda kufanya tenda alafu nachukua yule ambaye kuna bei ya chini zaidi sasa hiyo kampuni ile inapewa ruhusa ya kwenda kuleta mafuta na kuwapata kuwauzia wale makampuni zingine hapa ikifika tena baada ya miezi mitatu hiyo tenda ingine inapanyika namna hiyo lakini sasa hiyo sasa imetolewa ime sasa la serikali ndio inanunua kutoka katika hizo makampuni mawili ya Saudi na ya Emirates alafu inakuza kuuzia watu hapa lakini shid, hi, hata hakuna ubaya na hiyo kinafanyika ni kwamba katikati hapo wameweka vikwazo zingine alafu ujanja zingine hapo ambayo wanazidisha naye bei kwa hivyo bei ina, inakuwa juu zaidi kuliko kama ingekuwa inakuja kuanda ile OTS system na hiyo bei yote inapitishwa kwa uh, mwananchi mwananchi huko chini inabeba hiyo mzigo kwa sababu ya yote pale ambayo wao jamaa wanakula hapo katikati hapa kuna hii panya ambayo inakula hapo katikati hiyo ndio inasukuma kwa wananchi hapa eh, na kwa kila lita ambayo unanunua kuna shilingi 30 ambayo imebekwa zaidi juu yake na hiyo inakuliwa na hao watu katikati hao ndio tumeambia bwana Ruto utuambie sisi hao watu ni kila nani na kwa hiyo unawajua wewe ndio uliwaweka pale kwa sababu gani umeweka hao pale wananchi yanaumia hapa chini Ah, na swali mheshimiwa Raila Odinga jina langu ni Sydney Chazima kutoka NTV swali la kwanza ni kuhusu tunamuita njeri wa mafuta sijui kama umesikia hilo swala kuhusu wagizaji wa mafuta kule Mombasa kuna meli ambayo imeshikwa ilikuwa na mafuta kuleta nchini je mama huyu ni mmoja wapo ya wale amba, watu ambao wanaongelea alafu swali la pili tulimsikia mheshimiwa Kalonzo Musyoka akisema hivi majuzi kwamba ikiwa mazungumzo ya uiano kati ya Azimio na Kenya Kwanza hayataendelea mbele basi mnaweza rejea katika maandamano je hilo ni wazo sawia na lako Kwanza um, hiyo swali ya pili uh, kwanza hawajamaliza nataka kuanza kutoa masharti sasa wakifika wakati ambao itakuwa wametofautiana kabisa kuna mafikiano sisi wenyewe tutatoa taarifa yetu kwa wakati hii sitaki kutoa adhibitisho ingine tunaonekana ya kwamba sisi tunatoa vitisho manake hatutaki watu wawe wa, wa, wa na mafikiano so bado tunawapatia fursa kuongea uh, pili Mbo hiyo mama mafuta eh hiyo mama jeri wa mafuta eh sio mamona eh na unajua eh biashara ya mafuta unajua gharama yake pesa ambayo inatakikana ufanye biashara ya mafuta bilion 17 eh angalia sura yake kama <laughs> Ye, hawa na wakilisha watu wengine. Sasa wale ambao na wakilisha ndio tunataka kujua. Maana yake mingi ni kama sarakasi. Asanteni sana. Tutatumieni na kala ya dozi ya hii kwa uchambuzi kamili. Asanteni sana.